Hey folks, this is Don from BrainBlinks.com and I'm trying something a little different today. I'm going to live stream uh, one of my game dev sessions, I guess you'd call it. Uh, I'm working on getting some shapes to put in my next VR game and I'll be using Mandelbulb 3D, a, a 3D fractal program that you're probably familiar with if you've been watching my channel. And then uh, I'll be looking for shapes in there. I'll find the shape I like, grab it, uh, pull it in a ZBrush, clean it up, and then put it into Unity. And what I'm working on is uh, my next VR game called Xenofarm. And it's a science fiction farming simulation. And it's going to kind of be set in a space with a bunch of floating islands and a weird uh, kind of environment. So I'm looking for some shapes that might work as a floating island or some sort of strange rock that's uh, floating around in this space. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm a little rusty with Mandelbulb 3D. I'm also not quite familiar with the software I'm using to stream, so I hope this is working. <laughs> I guess I'll find out. So um, here we have Mandelbulb 3D, and I've got kind of a preset that I've worked on earlier. I'm going to use it as a starting point to uh, look around for some shapes. I also only have one monitor hooked up right now. I kind of just did this on a whim, so hopefully it works. Might have trouble seeing the chat. If there is any. <clears throat> All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, that's pretty cool. Trying to get a better view on this thing. That one's kind of cool, actually. If you've never seen Mandelbulb 3D, um, I've got a bunch of tutorials on my channel you can check out and show you how to use it. But basically, it's an awesome program that lets you explore all of these 3D fractal formulas and combine them and uh, look at them from dis different angles and um, morph them and animate them. And right now I'm just changing all the parameters on this setup that I have to look for interesting shapes. There's a lot of cool shapes in there, but it's not really a program where you can decide uh, what you want to look for. You more have to just kind of search around, tinker with all the formulas and see what you get. Those are kind of cool. I'm also, besides island shapes, I'm just looking for something that might be a, a weird rock floating through space or even some kind of weird organism or something. Let's see if there's other any other starting spots here that look interesting. Do, 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 do. Let's try that one. I don't really expect anybody in chat because I didn't tell anybody I was doing this. Oops, that's too high res.
And I'm kind of going for a low poly look on the game. Well, not severely low poly, but so I'm going to want something that has some kind of big, broader shapes that I can knock the detail out of and still have it look interesting. And this one is not bad, actually. I might keep, oops. Like I said, I'm a little rusty here. Yeah, <laughs> space clam. Stop. Mm, it was better before. Do, do, do. I think I might just use this one. Let's look at it from a different angle. Huh. I love the organic shapes you get with this mandelbulb 3d or if you're looking for organic shapes you can find them that's for sure it's just fascinating to me that you can get such natural looking you know, like plausible organic shapes out of all these crazy mathematical formulas that i barely understand you know i'm gonna go ahead and use this i think that's pretty cool um all right we'll go over here to the b tracer Import parameters. Boy, I'm really rusty here. I spent two or three years of my life using Mandelbulb 3D, but I haven't used it lately. <laughs> so, let's see. No. Trying to get this. This is a a preview of the shape that I'm trying to, now that I've found the shape, I need to kind of pull it out of Mandelbulb 3D. There's a, a function in here that will take this shape and convert it to a, a 3D mesh object. So right now I'm just kind of setting it up so I can go through that process. And it does that by kind of slicing it uh, into st a stack of images and then reassembling them into a mesh and it used to be that you had to generate the slices the image slices first and then use a whole other process and program to convert them all into uh, a 3d mesh object but uh, this most current version of Mandible 3d lets you do that all within the program here All right, let's try that at a low resolution. Uh, let's go for 300, screw it. Okay. 
unfortunately there's a lot of waiting around with Vanderbilt 3D. <laughs> there's a, you kind of look around and you render to see what it looks like, you look around some more, this process takes a while. And generating animations, that can take hundreds, sometimes thousands of hours to generate the complex animations. Right now I'm just generating a low res preview of the 3D mesh. Hey kitty. Here's that mesh. Ah, it's not bad. I think. Oh, I chopped off the edge here. Okay, I gotta. I'll have to move it a little. Mm -hmm, where are we at? Yeah, I need to move it back. It's a little hard to tell what's going on sometimes because of the way this preview works. The actual fractals in this program are not actual 3D volumetric shapes. They're kind of uh, approximation of uh, <laughs> a visualization of this mathematical form. And there's no actual mesh in there, so um, it's kind of doing a bunch of smoke and mirrors tricks to get this all to work. I better do another one just in case. Do a little lower. And I'm going to be knocking this down to a lower res anyway, so I won't have to render a super detailed version. Oh, we got someone watching. Hello, someone. Oops. I still cut off. Oh, it might be cut off. No, it's right there. Push it way back. I'm pushing it back in this little space here to try to fix that problem of it being cut off. Aha. Yeah, I think we can go with that. I'll, uh, I think I'll go for about 500 for the final one. So yeah, like I said, I do have some, uh, while that's rendering, I'll just go over here and show you s the playlist for my uh, 3D fractals for Mandelbulb 3D. Here they are. I guess there's 11 videos in it. They're all kind of old, but they're all still uh, valid and useful if you're interested in using Mandelbulb 3D. Probably the most popular, or definitely the most popular videos I have on my channel. This one right here is what ex kind of explains the process I'm doing right now, this 3D voxel stack tutorial.
All right, it's churning away. So I'll load up ZBrush while that's going. I use ZBrush for pretty much all of my 3D work for my games and stuff. Uh, I don't know what I would do without it. I learned it so long ago, you know, everybody, it, it's a weird program, but boy, is it powerful when you get used to it and uh, learn how to use it. This is a tool I was working on last night um, for Xenofarm, trying to make something that looks like both uh, touch controllers and the uh, Vive wands, and it's not easy. This is the best I could do of it. It looks pretty cool. It's kind of sci-fi. Trying to get something that kind of looks like it might, you know, feel like a touch controller and a Vive wand at the same time. All right, we're getting there. So Xenofarm has changed quite a bit since I last showed it off. Um, SDK over the years. Oops. <laughs> and uh, I've kind of rewritten the whole thing in the last few months and, and kind of changed the direction I'm going with it. Um, I think it's looking really cool now and it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm, I'm working up to a kind of a big reveal on the new version. But instead of this just kind of flat, realistic terrain, uh, it's going to be set on these little kind of floating islands that you can hop around to and plant your stuff. And uh, it's going to have a more kind of low-poly, um, semi-realistic look to it rather than this more realistic terrain. Still the same basic concepts, though, with uh, plants that you can plant anywhere that there's soil and... Uh, more like a simulation of the growing plants that they kind of react and grow according to the um, environment around them. I've also been using uh, Oculus Medium to make some of the shapes for the game, like these mushrooms here. I made these in Medium and then uh, converted them over to Unity. Now they're growing in my garden. A lot of the shapes in this image were made in medium. And the, this is actually a, an image that kind of provoked my change in direction on Xenoform. I, I created this in Oculus Medium and it was, I just, I liked it so much. I just kind of, I had an aha moment about my game and I thought, ah, oh, I'm going to use medium to make some of the shapes and kind of change the look and feel of the whole thing. And I'm really happy with the way it's going so far. Alright, so we got our shape. That looks pretty good. I better save this just in case. Where's that damn save button? Ah, oh, screw it. Okay. And let's see, we want to import 
And where the heck was that? It's probably over here. Yep. Xeno Rock. Two point three million points. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. So we'll be getting rid of all these little floating pieces in here at first. Apologize for the fan noise. If you can hear it, my computer is pretty loud lately. I need a new CPU fan. Alright, what I usually do first, excuse me, I go over to Dynamesh. Actually, I'm going to unify. And. Gonna get use ZBrush's uh, Dynamesh feature to kind of make sure the mesh is clean and well suited for using in ZBrush. Some of this stuff takes a long time too. All the fun stuff in the computer you usually have to wait for, <laughs> for at least when you're experimenting and using all this weird software. I've been waiting for computers to render shit ever since I was 14, <laughs> 15, sitting there waiting for 3D images to render or whatever, what have you. Hello, one person watching. You get to watch this fascinating progress bar along with me. Uh, what else we got? I don't have too many screenshots of this new version of Xenofarm. Go back up to this video. You can do it, ZBrush. Project faster. So yeah, in case you haven't heard about Xenofarm yet, it's basically going to be a science fiction themed farming simulation. And uh, I've always loved growing game plants in games, uh, but it always bugs me that all the plants are always, you have to plant them in rigid squares, basically, all the time. You know, Harvest Moon, uh, Stardew Valley, all these games. Get to, so I've always wanted a simulation of plants where you could just plant them anywhere you want. And uh, that's what I've got going here. Each plant is kind of its own little simulation, and you're able to plant them anywhere you want in the world, regardless um, of where you know where it is. And and they grow according to the um, their environment and what's around them, like how much water they have, what kind of soil they're in, how much food uh, is in the soil, how much uh, how many other plants are around them, things like that. And it's going to be kind of a combination exploration kind of farming game. 
Okay, so this is done remeshing a similar number of points. For now, I need to do another long process because I need to get rid of all these. Oh, we don't have to do that yet. Let's go ahead and decimate this sucker. Decimation master. Going to knock this down to a more manageable number of points here. We're at 2.6 million right now. So hard to tell sometimes when ZBush has crashed or if it's just thinking. Especially when you switch windows and come back because it doesn't update after that. Oh, it's crashed. Damn it. Let's try that again. Dad gummit. All right, let's see. Where were we? Oh, Stefan C. Um, yeah, yeah. There are a couple of fractal apps. Um, although in my experience, they haven't been great. Because there is a lot of math involved, and trying to do that real time in 90 frames a second is not easy. But I know there's one called VR Fractals that just went on Oculus Home, and I think it's on Steam as well. All right, let's try this again. There are also some cool 360-degree fractal videos. I've made a couple. You can check them out on my channel. Or, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Julius Horth, Horthus or something like that. It makes some really awesome 360-degree VR videos. And he's got an app on Steam VR. Or you can just download his videos or watch them on YouTube with something like um, uh, Virtual Desktop. Let's go for about 33% here. Decimate current. Alright. Let's see if this is going to work. Uh, I want to auto group these. Uh, so it'll go in and group all these little extra sections that are floating off of the main object that I don't want. And it'll be easy to get rid of them if it doesn't crash. This one will probably take a while too because. Still 783,000 points. Let's see if I can find those. Yeah, there he is. Julius, there's a ton of really cool 
uh, fractal artist on YouTube. Just look, search for Man Above 3D or 3D Fractals or something like that. But uh, Julius has done quite a few uh, 360 degree uh, videos. Really cool lighting and colors that he uses too. And then. Uh, Here's the best one I've done in 360. It was kind of a remake of one of my more complicated fractal animations, but uh, it's in 360. It's an eight minute trip through this morphing, shifting landscape. Looks pretty cool. I got uh, three or four different 360 degree fractal vids. I'd make more, but it takes so long to render and uh, it takes a lot of time that I'd rather spend making games and also there's no good easy way to make them 3D which I would really if I could make 3D 360 fractal vids I'd be making those again but it's just not possible with the software that I have well it is possible but it's not good <laughs> I'm trying to remember who there's one guy who's been making some 360 3D fractal videos. I can't remember his name though. Is he brush is still calculating the auto groups? shouldn't do that. It's probably pretty loud. Let's see. If I can remember that guy's name while we're Bib993 is a great fractal artist. He's one of my favorites. He makes beautiful stuff. Maybe it is Schizo. He's made a lot of 360 ones too. I don't know. Check out his videos. There's, there's a lot of really cool 3D fractal artists. Yeah, I think it is schizo. Let's see here. Yeah, this is the one. Schizo, look up schizo 604. And he uses a trick where he uh, he basically renders hundreds of slices of each frame of the animation and stitches them all together for each frame and then turns all that into an animation. And it just sounds like so much work. The the effect is pretty cool though. Uh, still auto grouping. It's a bad idea to stream a bunch of progress bars. Oh, what the heck? We'll watch this. Here's a kind of a sneak peek of what Xenoform is looking like right now. It's actually, I'm going to be calling it Gravity Garden. Uh, I just haven't made the official announcement on that yet. So you can see I'm kind of going for a, a kind of a low, more of a low poly, though not 100% like low poly look. But I, all these plants you see here all have their own little simulation running and they're all being affected by the plants around them and the soil and the water and the, 
uh, things like that. And they all have a complete life, life cycle where they grow and, and bloom a fruit and drop the fruit and then the fruit makes a new plant. And the player will be able to go around and harvest these fruits and uh, use them to grow new plants or convert them into the game's kind of currency. And this is kind of a prototype uh, flying mechanism I have where you just kind of spawn a little rocket in the air and uh, float around whichever way you want to go. It, it works pretty well. And uh, most of the people I've tested with don't get sick with it. Although, my dad sure does. He's a he's a perfect VR tester. He gets sick just sitting there almost. <laughs> so if, you ever, if I ever need to see if something's going to make some, anybody sick, I'll just let him try it and I'll know right away. Are we still going over here? And you see a lot of these shapes, again, I made in, in uh, medium. Uh, this rock island that you're seeing with the soil, these kind of weird uh, swirly cloud things, all these geometric, oh, those were in ZBrush. Some of the geometric stuff was even in medium. I take my geometric stamps in there and make stuff with them. Um, and that's going really cool. It gives a really cool organic feel to all the shapes. Oh, these weird clouds up here were in medium. All right, ZBrush, get on with it. Oh, come on. Well, it's taken way longer than I thought it would. Auto group sometimes takes forever, especially with this kind of a shape and all this detail in here. It's crazy. It's almost, I mean, three quarters of a million points, too. Should have reduced it more. In the meantime, let's watch this trailer from Chunky Orbits. <laughs> This was the last VR game I made. More like a toy than a game. But it's kind of a gravity simulation toy where you're out in space and you uh, can create your own little mini universe solar system thing with uh, these chunky rocks and like black holes and comets, things like that. A lot of fun if you're, if you're interested in you know, gravity or physics simulations. I'm really actually kind of proud of this program because I spent a lot of time polishing it and uh, it's something I've always wanted to make is a, a physics simulation like this where you're in there and interacting with the shapes and uh, math is not my super strong point so I was <laughs> really happy to get this working initially on it was initially an Android app it was one of the first the games that I made, uh, probably like the third thing I made with Unity, and I decided to make an a uh, Android app, which I probably won't do again, but, and that one worked out really well, and then I made it into uh, a gamepad controlled VR app when I, before I got Oculus Touch, and then I put it on early access Steam VR and added the motion, or the track controller support. And this is my favorite version of it by far. 
it's really fun to just get in there and be a part of this simulation and you can reach out and grab the rocks and uh, throw fireballs in there to stir the pot up and everything it's really cool hasn't sold very well but I didn't expect it to kind of aiming at a niche in a niche there but it was still worth it Chunky Orbits is actually on sale right now, so is Crash Lander. It's part of that Steam VR sale. I think you can get them both for three bucks. Wow, this is really taking forever. You can do it, ZBrush. I was trying to figure out a way to view this chat on my phone so at least I could see what was going on, but I haven't found that ability yet. Oh, maybe this will work. Oh, yeah. Yay. I can see the chat. That's better than nothing. <laughs> well, I could, uh, we could play charades. Oh, I think it's done. I hear my fans stopping. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to save this before I forget. And we have to go through all that again. So all I want to do is I want to hide all those extraneous ones and delete them. All right, we're down to 534,000 points. Let's go ahead and duplicate. Actually, let's do this first before I forget. Unify, set pivot. This would be a pretty cool little floating island. I could hide some interesting stuff down in here for the player to find. So let's see what we get when we really decimate this thing. I really don't want all this fine detail on the edges and everything. That won't fit with the style that I'm going for. Let's go way down. 
think I might even just mm. boy I don't like those at all <laughs> yeah, that's better. Smooth it out a little. those spiky bits either with these 3d fractal shapes you really got to be careful about how many holes and loops you have in your shape it can get really out of control especially if you're trying to get a UV map on them later oops so I just kind of inflated this area here to get rid of the holes that were right there. And then when I remesh that, it should go away. Yeah. Mostly what I wanted was oops, this big cup shape and these swirly bits here, and that's working out good. Uh, that was too much. I do kind of like this little lip on the edge, so we'll keep that. Oh, I still got. Yep. I'd like to keep some of this detail in this pit down here, but not much. I don't want the. I don't want any loops or tunnels, except for maybe that one. That's looking pretty good. Okay, we'll dynamesh it again. Uh, let's see. Um, clean up the mesh. I'm also going to close any holes that are in here. Oh, there's a hole right there. Yeah, that's kind of cool. We'll keep that. All right, let's duplicate this again. I just recently reinstalled Windows, and I don't have ZBrush set up quite like I like it. I forgot to save my custom user interface. I'm stupid. I haven't taken the time to fix that yet. All right, let's knock it down again. Let's go for about 10,000 polys. Yeah. 
Now I just have to hope. I hope the UV mapping goes well. Sometimes <laughs> these things are a nightmare. But this one is not going to be too bad. All right. So we should just have one group right now. Okay. And I'm just going to hack this thing up into some pieces here. I think I want, I want all these loop-de-loos on their own object. Right now I'm, oh geez, this is going to suck. Let's see, because they are looped. Uh, whatever. Right now I'm getting this thing ready to put a UV map on it. So I can texture and get the texture into uh, Unity. And I'm doing that by setting up some polygroups in ZBrush here that I'm going to use to guide where the uh, UV island should be. And this can be kind of a nightmare on these fractal shapes, but I've done it quite a bit now, so <laughs> hopefully I'll get lucky. I spent days, hell, maybe even weeks on some of the shapes in Crash Lander trying to get them to get a proper UV map on them so I could use them. But I learned a lot while I was doing that, so I usually can get them now without too much fuss. I could map UVs by hand. I use UV Master here in ZBrush, but even mapping them by hand would be impossible on some of these shapes. It's just, they're just ridiculously intricate and uh, complex. Uh, that one's kind of ugly. It doesn't matter. And I love the UV Master. <laughs> I know it doesn't make as crisp a UVs as a lot of people like, but it fits my style pretty well. It kind of chunky organic style oh we got local on it's always on This thing's going to be the worst. All right, now I'm going to try this. by front Uh, 
Okay. Go away. Let's see what's left here. These holes are going to cause a problem, but maybe we won't have to deal with it. Let's see. All right, UV master. Nope, nope, nope. Oh. Hey, we got one. This is good enough for me. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so uh, let's. I'm gonna put a quick paint job on this thing. We'll call it Space Clam. And I think I will group them. Yeah. Doop 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 doop. Oh, let's fill it with, uh, what color should we make it? I'm going to do some ambient occlusion, uh, masking to put some dark stuff in the sh crevices in the shadowy areas. I knocked it down to 120,000 points. It's so it won't take too long. Go back up. We'll invert that mask. And then add in some of those shadows. Is that right? A little too harsh. Let's smooth that out a bit. I'm smoothing the mask right now. That's good enough. And let's try this. See what kind of. I love these auto masking tools with these fractal shapes. They allow me to get a lot of really cool details in my paint job without much effort. Let's try this. This is just kind of a temporary job anyway, so... Color spray... Oh no, I don't want that. I better put on backspace, back face masking. Yeah, I like that. 
get a little bluer down here. Put that same blue down here. And I don't know. What's that look like? No. No. Uh, I do like that color though. Let's try that on the edge here. Yeah. Like I said, this is just temporary paint job, but I like to have something on there just to get an idea and maybe spark some ideas of my how I might want to paint it eventually. Let's go down there. That's too much. Let's go with something a little more colorful inside. Uh, Yeah, it's too busy. Yeah, let's uh masking Let's go for the ambient occlusion again. Well, let's put this in and see what it looks like. Save it. Uh, we should probably... Let's 
probably upside down. Yep. <laughs> Turn it around. All right, export FBX, boop a doop, and let's see. Nope. What did I call this thing? Space Clam. Alright, we'll leave that open for now. And now I don't know what's going to happen when I turn on VR while all this stuff's running. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> Oh, I'm streaming myself here. All right, Steam VR. Unity. Get a little moving around the mic noise, but I'll be all right. Here it comes. All right, let's see. Uh, create empty. Do, do, do. The space clam. Is it not centered? My pivot was not correct. There we go. Uh, let's make a new material. Gonna want this much bigger. Also, oh, <clears throat> yeah, that looks pretty good. How big is it? I kind of want it to be really big. I want to be able to walk around in those holes down there. Let's go for. You out of the way, out of the way. Yeah, let's uh, let's give it a look. See.
I have no idea what it's going to do to my live stream. <laughs> Should work, theoretically. Sure enough.